real. Come take a seat. What seems to be the problem today? Well, I was playing tennis. I'm like the star on my team and everything, and then my leg just stopped moving. Let me check to see what I can do. Oh, ah! oh no, I think you might have Glockin's disease. What's that? It's when your muscles are contract. What does that mean? Lucky for you, we have a video that will tell you exactly how your muscles contract. Now I'm going to explain the general structure of a muscle cell and skeletal muscle fiber. Each fiber resembles a cylinder. The cell membrane is known as the sarcolemma and the cytoplasm of the cell is known as the sarcoplasm. The sarcoplasm contains star-like fibers known as myofibrils. Myofibrils contain protein filaments known as myosin, which are thick filaments, and actin, which is known as the thin filaments. The actin and myosin filaments produce striations, which are muscle fiber bands. There are two parts to the striations. The light band is known as the I-band and is made up of actin filaments attached to the Z-lines. The A-bands are known as the dark bands and they consist of myosin and actin filaments. The H-zone consists of thick filaments with a thickening known as the M-line. The myofibril from one end of the Z-line to another to the other end of the Z-line is known as the sacromere. I'm Dr. Svileya, Nyla's doctor. So now that we've covered the structure of muscles, I'm going to explain how muscle contraction works. When you want to contract a muscle, such as when you play tennis and want to run and hit the ball, you probably want to move your skeletal muscles. You do this under the control of your nervous system. In other words, your nervous system communicates with the skeletal muscle fiber at the intercellular connections known as neuromuscular junctions. A motor neuron, a specialized nerve cell, controls each skeletal muscle fiber. A single axon of the neuron branches within the paramecium, the sheath of connective tissue surrounding a bundle of muscle fibers to form several branches, the end at synaptic ter terminals. The cytoplasm of the synaptic terminal contains mitochondria and vesicles filled with molecules of acetylcholine, or ACH. ACH is a neurotransmitter, or a chemical released by a neuron to communicate with other cells. The release of ACH from the synaptic terminal results in changes in the sarcolemma that trigger the contraction of the muscle fiber. The synaptic cleft, the narrow space, separates the synaptic terminal from the sarcolemma. This portion of the membrane, which contains receptors that bind ACH, is known as the motor end plate. Both the synaptic cleft and the motor end plate contain acetylcholinesterase, which breaks down the molecules of ACH. Neurons control skeletal muscle fibers by stimulating the production of an action potential or electrical impulse in the sarcolemma. More specifically, this is what occurs. An action potential arrives at the synaptic terminal. Acetylcholine is released. When an action potential traveling along the axon of a motor, motor neuron reaches the synaptic terminal, vesicles in the synaptic terminal release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. ACH binds at the motor end plate. The ACH molecules diffuse across the synaptic cleft and bind to ACH receptors on the sarcolemma. This event changes the permeability of the membrane to sodium ions. The result is a sudden rush of sodium ions into the sarcoplasm, which produces an action potential in the sarcolemma. The action potential appears at the sarcolemma and spreads over the entire sarcolemma surface. It travels down the transverse tubules toward the terminal cisternae that encircle the sarcomeres of the muscle fiber. The passage of an action potential triggers a sudden massive release of calcium ions into the terminal cisternae. The increased concentration in calcium ion causes active sites on the thin filaments to become exposed, cross-bridge interactions to occur, and a contraction to begin. Since all of the terminal cisternae in the muscle fiber are affected, this contraction is a combined effort involving every sarcomere on every myofibril. During this, the acetylcholine is broken down by acetylcholinesterase. In the resting sarcomere, each cross bridge is bound to a molecule of ADP and a phosphate group, the products of the breakdown of ATP, an energy storing molecule. The cross bridge stores the energy released by the breakage of high, the high energy bond, like a coiled spring that has not yet been released. More specifically, this is what occurs. The active site is exposed following the binding of calcium ions to troponin, which causes the troposin 
tropomyosin molecule that normally blocks the active sites of actin when the muscle is not contracting to be removed from the active sites. The myosin cross bridge it forms and attaches to the exposed active site on the thin filaments. The attached myosin head pivots toward the center of the sarcomere and ADP and a phosphate group are released. This step uses the energy that was stored in the myosin molecule at rest. The cross bridges detach when the myosin head binds another ATP molecule. The detached myosin head is reactivated as it splits the ATP and captures the release energy. The entire cycle can now be repeated. The cycle is broken when calcium ion concentrations return to normal resting levels, primarily through active transport into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So is there a cure or anything for blockage disease? Yeah, lucky for you, we just came up with a new shot that's going to cure your blockage disease for good. I'll go get it. <laughs>